this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song called Stand by R.E.M. And it starts off with this cool little intro lick where you can play open E, the second fret on the D string, kind of following that organ intro, and then you can play open A to second on the G string, and then second fret on the A string to fourth fret on, on the G string. actually through that and that kind of becomes our, our main chorus but we can kind of start on an E major chord and we play E major first finger goes the G on the first fret second finger on the A string second fret and third finger on the D string on the second fret and if you strum all those together that sounds an E major chord and it sounds really really happy and you may also want to think about using an E5 power chord where you can play the E string and the A string together and kind of get a thicker sound or another way to play it e Five would be doing first finger on the A string seven, third finger on the D string nine, and kind of working that way. E five, and then from the E we could go to an A major chord. We play A major. First finger goes the D on the second fret, second finger on the G string second fret, and third finger on the B string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A major chord. It sounds really happy. And you may also want to think about an A five power chord. We play open A and the second fret on the D string together. Kind of make that a little bit thicker. Or you could go to an A5, doing first finger on the low E string 5th fret, third finger on the A string 7th fret, and kind of work that for your A5. And then from the A, we'll be going to a B major chord, or a B7 chord. So you could do this as kind of a bar chord, actually kind of a 2nd fret bar, third finger over the D, G, and B string, kind of work that as kind of your B major. Or you could use a B5 power chord, where you do first finger on the A string 2nd, third finger on the D string 2nd. Or you could do B5 a different way, and doing first finger on the low E7, third finger on the A string 9. Or you could use a B7 chord, and we play B7. First finger goes to the D on the 2nd fret, 2nd finger on the A string 2nd fret, 3rd finger on the G string 2nd fret, and the pinky on the high E string 2nd fret. And if you strum the A string and the high E string, that sounds like an E7 chord, and it sounds really nasty. So through that part, you could even kind of do kind of a down idea, kind of the E2, 3, 4, A2, 3, 4, B. So I'm kind of doing four downs on the E, four on the A, and then kind of an eight down count on the B. That might be kind of a cool, sneaky way to kind of intro the tune or work your chords. Or one of my favorite uh, strum patterns for a 4-4 four, four, four like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we take the E and try that a lot. You'd have E, down, that is we end up halving that E and A. And you could do that with kind of a down, down up of the strum pattern on each chord. Or you could take the E and do a down, down, and hit the A for the up, up, down of the strum pattern. So you have E, down, A, down, B, E, A, B. And then from that intro, then we'll be going into our main chorus. There's this cool little lick that kind of comes out there, and if you wanted to kind of follow the lick, you'd have open E, fourth foot on the low E, second on the A, open A twice, and then fourth foot on the A, and then second foot on the A, kind of leading into that B note. So you went E, G sharp, B, A, A, C sharp, B, is kind of the note you're playing. Oh, four, two, oh, four, two. And then I'm gonna kind of throw in some Bs after that, actually. You could kind of do the lick. times on that first down of the down, down, up, up, down, up, you can put a bass for the chord. So on the E, you have low E for the bass. On the A, you have the A for the bass. And on the B bar, is actually on the second fret bar, you have the A string for the bass. You have the bass, down, up, down, or on the B7. So we tried that idea through that first chorus. We'd have the, we'd have the E, A, B. Actually, this is a 
cool lick in the verse where you could play open E, open D, and then fourth foot on the A string twice, and then third on the A, and then second foot on the A. And then we go back to open E, open D, and then we go third on the low E, and then open A, and then second foot on the A. So you're going open E, D, C sharp, C, B, and then an E, D, G, G, A, B is kind of that lick. And you could kind of back that up with chords by starting on E major, but then we could go to a D major chord. We play D major. First finger goes to the G string on the second fret, second finger on the high E second fret, and third finger on the B string on the third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, it sounds a D major chord and it sounds really happy. Then you could also make it a D5 by playing the D string and the A or the D and the G string together. Or another way to play D5 is to do first finger on the A string fifth, third finger on the D string seven, and kind of work that for your D5. And then from there for that C sharp note, you could kind of back it up with a C sharp five power chord. And if you wanted to, you could even follow that lick. Kind of a C sharp, C, B is kind of the idea. Fourth fret to third fret and then second fret, kind of following the first finger. <laughs> so you could kind of take that D5 and kind of follow that lick. Or the chord that we kind of back that up, it almost sounds like an A major with a C sharp in the bass. And the way you play the A major, actually, we can kind of take that idea. And if you kind of dig in on, on adding in bass notes, especially, you could take the first finger and bar with a D, G, and B, third finger on the A string, fourth fret, and then kind of make that A major, but it's got a C sharp in the bass, kind of that A string, fourth fret, for the bass note. And then from there, we go back to our B chord, and then we go back to our E major chord, and our D major chord, but then that last part of the lick, you may want to back up with a G major chord, where you do first finger on the A string, second, second finger on the low E string, third, third finger on the high E string, third, and kind of work that for your G major. Or another way to play the G is you could put third finger on the B string third, pinky on the high E string third. Or if you're digging on the power chord idea, you could do first finger on the low E third, third finger on the A string fifth for your G5. And you could even kind of follow that lick through with, with the power chords to that G, G, A, B. So you could even make it kind of a power chord idea, kind of that E, D, C sharp, C, B, E5, D5. G, G, A, B, or if you wanted to just kind of work the chords through it, you could even work the, the power chord idea, kind of that E, D, A, B, E, D, G, A, B, or E, D, A, B, E, D, or D, G, A, B, kind of working that idea. Or if, if you wanted to, you could even follow just that lick with the power chords, which could be very cool too. Or you can follow with the, the downs, actually, kind of just that E, D, A, B, E, D, G, B, E, D, A slash C sharp, B. repeating our chorus, repeating our verse, going back into our chorus again, and then we end up on a solo part that's just like our verse. So kind of like E, B, A slash C sharp, B,
into our last chorus. So we're back to kind of our E, A, B. Now, if you know the ways to mix this up, too, you know, feel free to kind of take this lesson and kind of embellish it any way you want to. There's lots of different patterns that can work and feel good through this tune. And from that last chorus, then we go into our outro choruses. That's where things get interesting. And we kind of start on an F sharp major. We kind of change keys. So you do first finger across the entire second fret, second finger on the G string, third, third finger on the A string, fourth fret, pinky on the D string, fourth fret, for kind of an F sharp major. Or you can make that just an F sharp five by doing low E string second, third finger on the A string on the fourth. And then we go to a B five, or we can even use that B major chord that we were doing. And then we take that shape and then we slide it over two frets. So we can take the B major chord, and slide it over two frets to, to the fourth fret. So now I got fourth fret bar, third finger over the D, G, and B is kind of a C sharp major idea. Or you can make that a C sharp five power chord, where you do first finger on the A string on the fourth fret, third finger on the D string, the sixth. So you could kind of follow it that way too, kind of F sharp, B, C sharp. And we end up doing that idea four times, kind of taking our, our chorus and kind of moving it up two frets is what we're really kind of doing. Um, to a G sharp major. And the way you play G sharp major, first finger is across the entire fourth fret, second finger on the G string on the fifth fret, third finger on the A string, sixth fret, pinky on the D string, sixth fret for a G sharp major. Or you can make that a G sharp five by doing first finger on the low E fourth, third finger on the D string on the sixth. And then we go to our C sharp major, or C sharp five we were just talking about. And then we take that idea and move it over two frets. So kind of a D sharp major idea would be going First finger bar over the sixth fret, third finger over the D, G, and B on the eighth fret, so kind of a D sharp major. Or you can make that a D sharp five power chord, where you do first finger on the A string six, third finger on the D string on the eighth, and kind of work it that way. So then we're kind of repeating that G sharp, C sharp, D sharp four times, and then we end up our outro chorus on kind of our big G sharp at the very end. So through that whole outro chorus, you got kind of F sharp, B, C sharp. Basics of how you can strum through stand by REM. So, good luck.